So today we're gonna to be making bagels with an everything seasoning. And there's one key ingredient that has to go in that because it makes everything burst into life. Now, if you've made a loaf of bread before, you're gonna be fine with this recipe. There's a few trip wires to watch out for, but I'll point those out as we roll through the recipe. Right, so this recipe makes 620 grams of dough. That yields four bagels, around 150 grams each. So into our bowl goes 226 grams of room temperature water, and that's followed by eight grams of sea salt. I'm gonna give that mixture a good stir until that salt's dissolved. And then next, I'm adding in four grams of instant dried yeast. Now the flour is gonna be added in two batches. The first is 176 grams of strong white bread flour, followed by a good stir with a spoon. Now, in goes eight grams of barley malt extract. Yes, you can use honey or molasses, but you've just got to remember, they're both sweeter than barley malt syrup, and that flavor profile's gonna be just a little bit different. Right, so now you can see why I only added part of the flour before the barley malt. The looser consistency makes it really easy to blend the sticky barley malt. This is a great tip to remember when adding any sticky substance to your dough. Now I'm adding the final 200 grams of strong bread flour. We're gonna bring this mixture together with a spoon until it forms a rough dough. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using strong bread flour for this recipe. You could make it with a softer flour. It would give you a softer final product, but beware. We need to pick these up with our hands after they've proved. So strong flour is gonna produce a stronger dough that's gonna be easier to handle. That is an important thing to factor in when choosing your flour. Now, once the dough becomes tight, you can wet your hand and finish the mixing using a pinching motion. Once we've got a rough dough, we can cover the bowl and leave it to rest. Right, so after 15 minutes, it's time to knead. Now, the hydration for this dough is bang on 60%, which produces a relatively stiff dough. That means two things. One, it's gonna be a bit more work to knead this properly, but more important, the lower hydration contributes to a stable dough, which again, makes it easier to handle when it comes to picking these up later in the process. Now this dough isn't gonna get a long initial fermentation period, so I do wanna make sure that I've developed some strength in the dough during this kneading stage. Right, so after five minutes of kneading, I'm gonna pop the dough into a bowl, cover it, and I'm gonna leave it on the side to relax for 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna knead it for a further five minutes. After 10 minutes in total, the dough should feel well developed. So at this point, we can pop it into the bowl, cover it, and leave it to prove on the side. So we need to be very careful not to let this dough ferment too quickly, otherwise our bagels are gonna overprove and then they'll deflate when we come to handle them later. So I found the best thing to do is to keep the first proving period short. So this dough has only been resting for 45 minutes since I kneaded it. And then after equally dividing the dough into four pieces, they're shaped, they're covered on the bench and then left to rest so the dough can relax. Right, so it's been 10 minutes and I'm gonna show you how I shape these by twisting the dough into a bagel shape. The first step is to roll the dough balls into a long sausage by applying downward pressure into the bench and then gradually rolling the dough outwards. I lay one hand over the other and as the dough becomes longer, I slide my hands apart, stretching the dough. Now this is quite a stiff dough, so you're gonna to need to apply quite a bit of pressure. The key is to feel when the dough becomes too tight to extend any more. And then at this point, the dough can be covered and left again to rest on the bench. Find yourself a baking tray or a container that's got high enough sides to allow the bagel to prove and to stop the cover from touching the top of the bagel. Now I'm gonna dust the bottom of my tray with some fine semolina, but you could rub it with a little bit of olive oil. After 10 minutes of resting, this dough is nicely relaxed and it's ready to work with again. I'm gonna take one piece of dough I'm gonna roll it as I did before, making sure that it's long enough to stretch around my hand with enough dough left over to seal. I'm gonna twist the dough as I coil it around my hand, and then I'm gently gonna roll that dough backwards and forwards on the worktop to seal the dough together. Now, you don't wanna to push too hard. You need to use just enough pressure to bring the dough together, but not so much that you create a thinner section of dough. As the dough's under tension, it's gonna shrink back a little when you remove it from your hand, and you're gonna end up with a little bagel shape like this. You're gonna repeat that with the other pieces, 
then we can place them onto the tray, leaving enough space between them so they don't touch as they increase in volume. Now we can cover the tray and leave the bagels out at room temperature to prove once again. Right, it's super important not to let these go too far at this stage. The bulk of the proving will be done in the fridge. Now these have been sitting for just 30 minutes and they're ready for their cold proof. So they're gonna sit in the fridge overnight covered. Right, so it's the next day and it's time to boil these bagels. Now I don't have a wide pot, so I'm gonna do them one by one. Right, so on my stovetop, I'm boiling three and a half liters of water with one tablespoon of honey. Now you could use barley malt syrup, but I really like the glaze that the honey gives to the outside of the bagel. Right, so you need to be careful handling these, but if you've used strong bread flour and your hydration is on point and you haven't overproved them, then you're gonna be good. The bagel is gonna boil for one minute and I flip it halfway through. As I take the first one out, I pop the second one in, and then the first bagel is quickly drained on a slotted spoon before it goes into the bagel mix. Now I'm using a mixture of sesame seeds, poppy seeds, onion and garlic granules, nigella seeds, and a really good pinch of sea salt. Don't skip the salt. In my opinion, this is what brings this mixture alive, and you can really notice it in the final product. So the first one goes onto the peel and then the second one comes out of the water. Follow the exact same procedure, drain the bagel, pop it in the mix, coat it well on both sides, handling that bagel carefully. Right, so I load the two bagels onto a baking stone that's been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius, that's 430 degrees Fahrenheit. The oven's set to conventional bake mode. I'm gonna bake them for 15 minutes. Now it's just a case of repeating the process with the other two bagels, and when that timer starts to bleep, this is what we've got. They're golden, they're crispy, they're crackling from the heat, but we haven't baked them so much that the seasoning's overcooked on the outside. So the crust on these is something special. It's crisp, but it's chewy at the same time. And the same goes for the crumb. It's soft, but you've got this element of chewiness. You have to work for your reward. As you're chewing, your mouth is really salivating. I love the topping. I love the onion and the garlic, but, but make sure you add some sea salt because that just makes everything come alive. No excuses. Clear your baking schedule this week and give these a go. You won't be disappointed. So some important takeaways for this recipe. The first, use a good strong bread flour. The second, make sure your hydration's dialed in correctly. And thirdly, don't overproof your dough. Remember, we're gonna have to pick these bagels up. Now, if you've got a load of sourdough discard kicking around, then check out this video here for my waste not, want not recipe. A huge thank you for watching. Let me know what you think to these bagels. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.